I'm Rhoda Zoller Samuel, and I'm here today, August 23rd, 2016, with uh, architect, local architect Ed Cherry, to talk to him about his memories of in the Lower Dixville Avenue area, particularly some of the places that he remembers. Tell me about when you first came to New Haven and the Lower Dixville area. 1942, uh, my parents came up from North Carolina to New Haven to work during the war at Winchester Repeating Arms. And uh, my brother and I, Howard, came up uh, in June of 42. And uh, we arrived in New Haven, two boys from the south coming to the north. They had a milk and honey, so they say. <laughs> we found uh, New Haven to be a very exciting place. A lot of people that we enjoyed and became very friendly with. What, where did you live and, and what was it like in the neighborhood? Where did you go to school? What was life like for you? Well, you have to look at it in a comparative way. In the South, we all lived in single family homes. And uh, coming to the North, as it were, we moved into a tenement house. Uh, the first place we lived was on Orchard Street near Golf. And from there we moved to Gregory Street, uh, just off uh, Winchester Avenue. This was 1942, remember, and so most of all single family houses or tenement houses. And uh, this is what we found in terms of a place to live. What was the condition of the housing? Well, the housing was, was fair, uh, nothing elaborate or what have you, just basic residential spaces, cold water flats, mm -hmm. kerosene heaters, for no space heaters, no central heating, very few places had central heating. Being in the city, you naturally had plumbing facilities. It was typical city housing. And you were going to school? Oh yeah, yeah, well, uh, my brother graduated from school in North Carolina, and so I came up here in the uh, Hill House High School on Tower Parkway at the time and uh, fit right in. What are some of your memories about high school and your activities after school? Typical high school. You had uh, friends from all parts of town, a uh, melting pot, all ethnic groups. Uh, so my best friends were Irish and Italian. I see one or two now, but uh, then of course I had some black kids in class, not very many. I think there were about 26 in my graduating class, class of 800 something, and there was 26 blacks in the class. And um, it, was, it was a melting pot. Everybody got along fine. Are there some teachers that you remember? Oh, I miss. I remember Mr. Flanagan, who was our math teacher. Mr. Goslin, our teacher in uh, drafting. Doctor uh, Sabina Car Carly Hoyt was my English one of my English teachers, and Miss Ostagi was my. Uh, French teacher. No, no, Miss Wilcox, my French teacher, yes. Did, did your drafting teacher give you your initial interest in architecture? No, I've always had an interest in art. And uh, in, in those days in high school, there was a school adjacent to your house called Boardman Trade School. There were several schools in the area, in the Tower Parkway. Uh, Hill House was the academic high school, commercial high school, which is now Wilbur Cross, was a commercial high school, and Boardman Trade School was the the school where kids who wanted to learn a trade, like electricians or uh, what have you, would go there. In the uh, program that I took in high school, we took uh, classes in Boardman Trade, and I took drafting because it sounded, seemed like a good course to take because I was always interested in art, always drawing something, freehand drawing, watercolor, what have you. Where did you go after school? Well, very interestingly, um, during that period of time, there were so many kids going to Hill House, because the suburban schools did not exist, Woodbridge School did not exist, Branford School did not exist, so there were two, two shifts at Hill House, morning school and afternoon school, and in the afternoon uh, I had a job during the war, it was, war was on, and so we all worked, mm -hmm. and uh, on weekends I went to the Dixwell Community House, uh, where I met many of my friends that I still have today, learned different things like learn how to shoot pool, play basketball, tennis, and what have you. What are some of your memories of some of the stores and businesses on, on Dixwell Avenue? It was a pretty lively place, wasn't it? It was a neighborhood. Uh, the neighborhood includes all sorts of things. Uh, neighborhood includes stores, it includes uh, bars, grills, 
pool rooms, bowling alleys, confectionery shops, and uh, churches, of course. And it includes uh, a hotel, Dixwell Avenue uh, Hotel, Props Nelson's Neighborhood, uh, Props Nelson's a hotel on Dixwell Avenue, and um, all kinds of stores. It was a, a compact neighborhood. You could buy anything on Dixwell Avenue, shoes, clothes, what have you. You could do, buy anything. And the uh, neighborhood movie house. I had the bar and had the um, newspaper stand, drugstore, doctor's offices, lawyer's offices. Tell me about your uh, interest and involvement with the Gough Street School for Colored Children. Well, I did not get involved with the Gough Street Special School until I joined the Masonic Order, Prince Hall Masons, in 19, I think it was 59. And I'd seen the building there, but did not know what it really was, because it was not taught in school. You, either you knew or you didn't know, and I think that was one of the problems about history, and the history of, of architecture, history, just local history. Nothing was ever said about this in school that I knew of, and I learned that this was the how Connecticut was uh, situated in that, uh, bygone times. Uh, it was not a slave state, but it wasn't really pro-slavery, and in New Haven itself, there were no schools for black kids to go. Uh, the only schools black kids went to were private schools in people's homes. In 1854, I believe it was, a group of four or five uh, citizens of New Haven, white citizens of New Haven, felt that there was a need for uh, a building for black kids to attend school. And this was a school in 1854. Because Connecticut had a black law prior to that time which prohibited black kids from going to school with white kids. Until around 1859 or thereabouts, the law changed, and uh, the Gough Street Special School no longer became important as a place for school, but uh, the trustees decided that it would uh, like to keep the building in the neighborhood uh, for philanthropic purposes and set up a board of directors. And the Gulf Street Special School became a so-called community center at that time. And uh, it became, there was no, of course there was no wide for black kids in New Haven at that time. And I say of course. And uh, so uh, this, this building became a Y at one time for kids. Uh, it became a, a school for trade schools and things of that sort. And St. Louis Church used that building as a parish hall or a church at one time. In 1929, the building was sold to the Prince Hall Masons. And uh, we bought the building, or they bought the building in 1929, and it's still owned by the Masonic Order. You've also had some involvement with the, the Odd Fellows. I had no involvement. The Odd Fellows just, I know, just knew it was there okay. and knew the importance of the building as a community facility. This was a place where blacks would have a different social activities, there were stores on the ground floor. It's a great place to, it's a great social hall for small social activities. The Elks were, is another group? The Elks Club was a, is, it was the Improved Benevolent Protective Order of Elks of the World, mm -hmm. uh, located on, on Gough Street, mm -hmm. uh, in the area which is occupied now by uh, St. Martin's Townhouse, I believe it's called, across from the new school that's going up. And St. Martin de Porres? St. Martin de Porres was, uh, when I came to New Haven, uh, St. Martin de Porres was a, uh, the building was, low, was used as a police precinct station. Believe it or not, there was a precinct station. We talk about community policing. There were community policing back then in the 40s. And uh, years later, St. Martin de Porres, uh, Blessed Martin, as it was called before, uh, uh, Blessed Martin was canonized as a saint. They purchased a building and the school there now and the church. Do you remember the Lyric Theater? Well, yeah, um, the Lyric Theater was, like most neighborhoods, they had a, a local theater in most neighborhoods in the city of New Haven. And in the Dixwood area was the Lyric Theater, which is located in the, was located in the area now located by the Dixwood Shopping Plaza. A small neighborhood house, had local movies, not local movies, but movies. And uh, there was nothing special about it, just a local movie, movie house. A lot of people went there on the well, weekend? It was, it was a small theater. You know, yeah. You know, you, you go there if you didn't want to go down to the Bijou Theater. There were three theaters downtown. Most neighborhood theaters, you got movies after the fact, after they had been seen all around. And certainly was a second-rate uh, movie house, so far as movies are concerned. No major uh, 
film were shown there, mm -hmm. but if you want to see a major film, you go down to the Bijou or the Palace, Paramount. What what kinds of things did you did you like to do at, at the Q House? I know you said that you used well, to Well, typical, the yeah, it, it was a typical place for boys, uh, young kids. They play basketball, hang out, meet your friends, play pool, and uh, just a place to gather, like any, any, any community house. Any you had some good friends school. there? You had oh, good yeah. Friends. Oh, sure. That's where you met your friends. You met your friends at the Q House. All good, good friends. Hannah Gray Home is another. Um, well, Hannah Gray Home was a is a local institution. Uh, it's a building that, uh, as an architect, we did some renovation work there at one time, and I got to know the people there pretty well. But I, anybody who knows New Haven knows that the Hannah Gray Home was a place that uh, a, a woman who did service for the Yale students, um, like uh, laundry and so forth, she made enough money to purchase a home, not the present home, but the first home was purchased, and they moved to this building. And it was used for indigent, so-called indigent black women, where they would have a place to stay. The Varick AME Zion Church is another... Varick AME Zion Church was a church that I attended. It came to New Haven, being a Methodist, AME Zion Methodist. Uh, I went to church there, and uh, Sunday school, church, and so forth. And it's a place now listed on the National Register of Historic Places, scholars can come and study the history of the building, a place where Booker T. Washington made his last public address before he passed. So there's quite a bit of history in Barrett Church. Curry's Confectionery. Curry's Confectionery was, uh, I'm sure that most neighborhoods had candy stores. This was a local candy store where this couple made uh, candy of all different types. And I heard Miss Lillian Brown say that uh, one of the types of candy that she liked was uh, a coconut bar with chocolate. Now, one of the mounds stole that from them. They sold it to mounds because the uh, company in uh, Naugatuck. Is there anything else you want to share about your memories of Dixwell Avenue? Well, you know, I don't think you can go away from Dixwell without talking about bazookas. Bazookas was a uh, Greek-owned confectionery store where you get your banana splits, take your best girl to go there and have banana split, and the guys would go there, sit at the counter, and Eat ice cream and stuff. Well, it's a great ice cream store on Dixwell and Webster Street. Dixwell Avenue changed a lot in the era of urban renewal. Do you want to say anything about that, Ed, as well, an architect? Well, yeah, Dixwell's changed. Uh, like, New Haven is an old city, very old industrial city. It housed a lot of uh, immigrants, and they lived on top of each other. That brings up slums. And so there are stores in neighborhoods, uh, if they're not well kept, helped to blight a neighborhood. And New Haven was a blighted city, and uh, the federal government had a program of urban renewal, and this came to New Haven in the, oh, I think it was early 60s, I believe. And uh, what it did was to renew the cities that were really in poor physical condition. Urban renewal was a blessing in disguise in many cases because it uh, cleaned up cities, cleaned up deplorable housing conditions, cleaned up seats, streets, and things of that sort. And it helped to improve the quality of schools and quality of life in neighborhoods. Anything else you want to share about your memories of, of Dixwell and your involvement with any of the organizations? Well, um, yes, I'd like to say that uh, I spoke of my being a member of the Prince Hall Masons. Uh, that was one organization I belonged to and still do, very active in the Masonic Order. Uh, I was active as a member of the Omega Psi Phi fraternity, uh, which was started in 1911 at Howard University and continues today in New Haven. Being a Prince Hall Mason, I started in 1776 in Boston, Massachusetts, where I founded Prince Hall and continues today. And I'm proud to say that I'm a member of that order. I'm an architect, and I would like to think that I'm the first black who became registered as an architect in the state of Connecticut. I believe it was 1953, Connecticut established a licensing law for architects. In 1958, I became licensed as an architect. And uh, my number is 1522. The office I worked for, the boss's number was 138. So that shows the numbers, <laughs> differences. So that's something that... Uh, and we've done quite a few buildings. When I say we, I mean my office has done several buildings in the Dixwell area. The United House of Prayer Church and the Dixwell Community House uh, residential buildings in Dixwell. Not Dixwell, yeah, we did some public, uh, not public housing, uh, non-profit housing 
on Munson Street. So we contributed to the Dixon area. And you've been a pillar of the community, and you continue to be. Oh my God! I didn't know that. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Nice? Yeah. Thank you. Thank Should you very well. much. All right.